we're at a time where the headlines of late, Christine Lagarde and many global central bankers in Europe and Japan are nervous, that they just can't get it done with the tools they have and that their tools have dulled. They're not going to be able to address should weakness come. But you argue that fiscal policy, which many of the European uh, bureaucrats want to take a larger presence, isn't the answer there or anywhere at this time. Explain. Well, fiscal policy works. You can stimulate demand with fiscal policy, but it's very hard to do it in the clinical, surgical way to fight business cycles. Fiscal policy is very political. I mean, look at the State of the Union last night. Ask if you know, the, these two sides can reach technocratic decisions the way the Fed does. You can go the same in Europe or anywhere. So on paper, it looks good. You shift the uh, money curve, you shift the, fit, the IS curve, it all works. But fiscal policy is very political, hard to time. They're going to try it. Every central banker sort of quietly says, there's not much we can do. Let the fiscal authorities operate. I think it means we're going to have more volatile business cycles. And you know what? Your logic is, is, in my opinion, impossible to disagree with. As a matter of fact, the new threads on the fiscal side now include MMT, deficits don't matter. Uh, if you have a fiat currency and enough printers and a large forest, you could do whatever you want. Scary. But on the other side of the ledger, you know, central bankers and ours, starting with Alan Greenspan, wanted to write the word recession out of the Webster Dictionary, but yet... Those recessions had a way of cleansing the economies of the globe, and it certainly seems like there's a lot of sediment that's been forming. Well, there's certainly old Schumpeterian theories that you need recessions to get rid of the weak firms, build up the strong firms. I don't know about that. I mean, I think the modern central bank's been one of the great innovations since Keynes. But unfortunately, it's sort of dead in the water today. The Fed has some ammunition. I don't think as much as uh, my friend Ben Bernanke thinks. They have some. In Europe and Japan, there's next to nothing. And so it's a, it's a real question of what is going to happen when there's another recession. And I think central bankers said, let give fiscal policy a chance. It's what everyone says. But it's very political. How is it going to work? How are they going to time it? What does it mean? For some, it means make the government as big as possible. For others, it means cut taxes as much as possible. I think um, it's not going to be a long-term answer. You know, and once again, we're at a spot where I would think that prudent, common sense, uh, people listening to the discussion that weren't necessarily steeped in economics would agree with everything you've said thus far. But isn't there also a subtle problem that central banks, and let's speak to ours directly, uh, have amassed so much debt and they need to buy debt to keep the music playing that maybe it's just a slower form of what fiscal policy would screw up in a quicker pace. Your final thought. <coughs> well, that's absolutely right. What central banks have been doing with some of these alternative monetary instruments is sort of a very low-grade fiscal policy. It works a little bit. It doesn't work very well because they're, they have very small boats compared to the big navy of the government. But... They'll do a little bit of that and pray that fiscal policy works. Again, I think we're in for more volatile business cycles until they fix monetary policy. I, I couldn't agree more. As a matter of fact, I was hoping you had a door number three. Thank you for your time, Professor <laughs> Sarah. Back to you. There, All right, there Rick, is thanks. a door number three next time.